What's up guys? Welcome to Fairlight 101. So if you're new to DaVinci Resolve and you want to learn a little audio editing, you got to jump into the Fairlight tab. That's where all the good audio stuff is. So you're going to be seeing my presentation from ResolveCon 2022 in this video where we take a look at the interface in Fairlight. We go through all the parts and pieces. I give you tips and tricks along the way on how to work in Fairlight. And then we're going to take an example and we're going to work through Fairlight with that example. And I'm gonna show you how we can take that audio that actually, uh, let's see, that audio that was recorded right here through my 5D Mark IV without the microphone, just right into the camera. We're gonna take that and we're gonna make it sound better and more professional in Fairlight with a few simple steps. So I'm gonna make those files available for you guys. You can go download them and then you can follow along and play with the clips and try it out on your own. So let's get into this Fairlight 101 video here from ResolveCon. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave it down below. What's going on everybody? It's great to be here uh, at ResolveCon 2022 here. Casey, thanks for asking me to come back this year. I'm just excited to be able to be here and uh, just share this stage up here with all the other awesome creators here. Uh, today's been awesome. I mean, I've learned a ton. Hopefully you guys have too. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about audio a little bit. Um, actually, I just looked at a poll that I had put on my channel this morning and I asked people like, do you get in the Fairlight to work with your audio? And I think it was like 60% of the people said, I get in there, but I got a lot to learn. And then I had another like 25% that were like, no, nah, I just edit my audio in the edit page. I don't even go into Fairlight. And the rest were just scattered uh, amongst the other options there. So, but we're gonna get in there and I'm gonna go through the Fairlight page and kind of show you um, just around the interface, what all the different parts and pieces are so you can understand kind of where we can do things, how we can work with our audio uh, in Fairlight. Um, I'll give you tips and tricks along the way. And then I've got an example that we're gonna work through uh, to just see how we can take audio that I recorded out of my 5D Mark IV with no microphone, just straight into the microphone that's built in, which is junky, it's terrible. So how we can take that and then uh, use a few of the tools in Fairlight to make it sound the best we can, right? It may not be perfect, but how can we just make it better than it is if you just record it right out of here? So that's kind of where we're gonna go um, with all the Fairlight stuff. And then just a quick uh, background ab about me, if you don't know me, you haven't seen my stuff. Um, got into Resolve by watching Casey's videos and learned there was a free version. And I was like, okay, I'm going from iMovie to something, do I wanna pay for it? And I was like, wait, there's a free version? I'm in. So I got in there, started looking around, and when I saw Fairlight, um, started poking around in there, and I'm like, wow, I got a lot of good audio tools in here. And a lot of it looked familiar to me because um, I've got experience uh, mixing services for my church. So learning all the audio stuff to run a live service, um, you know, you had to learn how to, you know, get the mics ready for speakers, for vocalists. You had to learn how to get instruments, you know, all, all into uh, a big mixing board. You had to learn how to set good gain levels for everybody coming in because if you don't have good audio signals, right? If our oil is garbage to start with, we can't make it great, right? We want to start with the best we can. And then how do we start to add things to it or take things away to kind of sculpt it and make it sound good for the room that we're in? Things like using some EQ, maybe adding in some dynamics, maybe working with effects. Um, and how do we start to do all that? So a lot of my audio background came in just learning that stuff. How do I, how do I do all that stuff on you know a big 32 channel mixing board, um, and how do I get it right, right? Because if we're working with audio and you mess up, everybody knows it, and they're usually going to tell you too. But if you do a good job, then no, nobody says anything. Everything goes on smoothly, and uh, you're able to have you know a good whatever it is conference here, service, whatever it might be. Um, so. So that's kind of like my background. And when I saw what Fairlight had to offer, I said, hey, I can just take kind of what I learned for all this you know, stuff over here and bring it over into Resolve and we can use the same tools and work with the same things to kind of make our audio sound better for any kind of audio that we have, right? Um, and we're gonna be taking a look at an example uh, of, of just dialogue today. Um, but I mean, you can edit any kind of audio here in Fairlight. So when it comes to audio, like I think the panelists were talking about earlier today, super important to have good audio, right? Because if we all jump on a video and it doesn't sound good, we're probably just gonna go to the next video because we know it'll probably sound fine and it's just nicer to listen to, right? So I've got a few examples here just to kind of illustrate the point of um, good video and bad audio, bad video and good video, uh, good audio, and then what it looks like when we put them together. So. Uh, here's some examples of just me, and uh, this first one is some bad audio and a video that looks all right. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger here. So, uh, so here's the first example, and uh, let me know if you'd want to sit and listen to a video that sounds like this. Right. 
What's that? Oh, there you go. That'll do it. Thank you. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to BizOffCon 2022 here. Casey, huge thank you for having me out here. Let's, see Let's get into some fair like. Would you guys watch a video that sounded like this when you're trying to learn something or you can just watch something for fun? What do you think about this? Is the audio good enough that you would keep on watching? All right, now we'll go put on over to the microphones and all these kinds of things. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so a couple of things. I don't know, maybe we can turn it up in here. I'm going to, I don't know, see if I can turn it a little louder. But some things we noticed about that. One, it sounds like junk, right? Um, I had a big fan going on in the background, blowing air right, right into the microphone. I had the microphone far away from me, so it was picking up extra ambient noise. Um, and then it was peaking, right? It was all distorted. It sounded like junk. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to sit there and listen to a video or watch a video that sounds like that, whether it's just something I'm watching for fun or whether I'm trying to learn something. So, so this next example is a video that doesn't look as great, but it's going to sound better. So for me, I think I'd be more likely to watch a video that sounds like this. So welcome to ResolveCon 2022. Now here is our second example. The video quality on this one might not be up to par with the previous example that we took a look at, but the audio is going to be much better. So which video are you more likely to watch, whether it's to learn something in Resolve or something just for fun? Right, and it's kind of like everybody mentioned earlier, people are more likely to forgive, you know, a video that's like, eh, it doesn't look so great, but sounds good, right? We can all hear it, understand it, it's understand it, it's clear. Um, and ideally, we want to bring them both together so we can have good audio and, and ideally, good video. we're going to take the best of both worlds. We're going to take our good audio and our good video, put them together, and then we're going to have a video that looks good, sounds good, and that our audience is going to want to watch. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to... And back to the bad stuff, right? <laughs> so, uh, it was actually kind of hard to make that bad audio. It took me a couple of tries to, to, get it to get it bad enough, you know? <laughs> so, so, so you can see the difference there. I, I think that just helps to show, like, we can watch a video that doesn't look great, but at least it's, we can understand it and, and, uh, and hear it good, and it's not killing our ears. So we're going to uh, jump into Fairlight now. Um, if you're following along or you have the practice files, I'm going to jump into the... the timeline that says edit file, and this is the one that we're going to work with. So um, the first thing I want to do is actually, we're going to jump into Fairlight, so musical notes down at the bottom of the screen, and uh, we're going to run over the whole interface here, and I'm just going to kind of point some things out and um, give little tips and tricks and maybe how I use things uh, along the way, just to kind of give you an overview of everything that we've got going on here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, reset the UI layout by going to Workspace. And then, uh, where's this guy? Oh, whoa. Oh, I only got to hit it once. All right, all right. Um, right there, reset UI layout. I'm a, I'm a Mac guy. This whole PC thing is just, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> all right. So if you guys did that too, you should at least be seeing the same thing uh, on the screen if you're, you're in the, the practice file. So we're just going to run across the top here. So media pool, obviously, most of us are familiar with that. It's where all your media lives. The effects, when you open this up, you've got uh, two different things in here. You've got your audio transitions and you've got your audio effects. Now you're not gonna see any of your video effects here because we're just focused on working with the audio stuff and uh, not working with any of the, the video effects or video transitions. So just audio stuff is what we're gonna see here. And with all of our effects here, we can add them onto either our clips or our track right from uh, the effects library here. And it's easy to do, it's just drag and drop. You can just click, hold, drag. If we want to apply it to just one particular clip, we would drag it and drop it just on one particular clip. And it'll bring up the, the uh, effect window that you can adjust. But if I wanted to apply it to the entire track, actually, I'm just gonna undo that. If I wanted to apply it to the whole track, I could just click, drag it, and drop it on this area over here. And then it's gonna apply it to the entire track, which it'll also put it over in our, uh, in our mixer over here. And we're going to talk more about the mixer in a little bit. So two different ways that you can add effects with just the effects library there, if you want to. Um, moving to the next part here, the index. The index is kind of cool because it gives you kind of an overview of all your tracks, right? We can see all the names here uh, of our tracks. You can turn your tracks on and off. So if I click the little eyeball um, on the video track, it turns that off. If, say, I want to look at just one particular audio track, I can click on the eyeball and turn off anything I don't want to see. Maybe I just want to be able to focus on one particular track that I'm working with. Um, you can turn things on and off, which is kind of cool. You can rename your tracks. You can do it in multiple spots, but one of the spots is right here. So if you just click on the name, we can name it whatever we want. Um, so that's, you can do it in other places too, but 
it's handy to be able to do it right there. Um, we can also have, uh, we also have these track controls here. So we can lock our track, which is gonna allow us to not make any changes to it. It's gonna lock the track. We can arm our track to record right here. We can solo the track, which means play just this one track that's soloed. Uh, you can have multiple tracks soloed. So you can play, you know, say you wanna play, I don't know, one dialogue track, two effects tracks, um, but no music. You can just solo the tracks you wanna hear and it'll only play those particular tracks. Uh, you can also mute a track. So if you have some scratch audio maybe that you use to line up your good audio or something, you can just mute that entire track and it won't affect anything else and that way you don't hear it. Um, it'll also tell you the format of your track. So are you set up with a mono track? Is it um, a stereo track, which is 2.0? Is it 5.1? Is it surround sound? You know, what, what kind of format is your track in? So it gives you a lot of good info. Um, and one of the other cool things that I kind of wish they had in the edit tab that I don't think they do is that you can just move tracks around right here in the edit index. So instead of having to like come over here and right click and say move track up, move track down with this guy right here, you come over here, you can just click on your track, drag it, boom, and drop it. Now my music track is all the way at the top. So if you have a whole bunch of effects or you need to organize stuff a little bit, you can just come in the index and just grab your tracks, move them all around and put them wherever you want. And I don't think you could do it Wish with, you could do it with video. Well, exactly. I don't think you could do it with video, right? I'm like, why, why not, right? It would be so much easier than move one level at a time. So maybe, maybe they'll add that someday. But it's nice to be able to just drag and drop things, move them around. You can also do that with, with buses. So you can click on your bus and I can bring that to the top. Now, in my tracks, it's not going to put the bus right here. But in my mixer, it's going to put the bus right in the beginning over here. So it'll be my first track instead of you know, my vocal one being the first track that I see here. So it's just handy to be able to kind of move things around and, and uh, reorganize a little bit. Because like we talked about with file structure, organization is important here with audio too. So a lot of cool stuff you can do in the mixer. You can also check out your markers if you have any. And if you have multiple uh, video clips, it would show you here in the, the edit index tab right there. The sound library, you can uh, download, I think it's a free library right from Blackmagic and really just have one central place to have like effects and sound effects and things that you just want to drag and drop easily right into Resolve. So that's handy. I'm sure you can even create your own sound library if you got your own, you know, effects, noises, uh, music, whatever, you could probably create your own sound library. I haven't done that, but um, I'm sure you could do that. The ADR tool, so if you do a lot of voiceover work, the ADR tool comes in real handy because it can give you like cues on when to come in, it can put the words on the screen for you, so if you have something scripted out, you know, um, you know when to come in and then exactly what you want to say, and it, it will you know, highlight it over the length of time that you say, um, but you can like build out a whole whole thing for voiceover stuff uh, if you wanted to. So that's a cool tool um, that, that you can use if, you're, if you need it. The mixer. The mixer is where we're going to do a lot of work um, in Fairlight here. There's a lot of tools that we're going to be using over here. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, what each one of these little things are and how to kind of work with them uh, in a few minutes here. The meters at the top here, we have uh, kind of like a high level view of the levels or the meters of all of our tracks. So you can you know, play through your video and just kind of get a good high level view of where our levels are kind of falling for different tracks. So you'll be able to see maybe, you know, are you peaking on any tracks? Does anything look really low? Um, and you, you know, you've got your, your levels over here. You can kind of just get a glance of, of what's going on with all of your audio. And same thing for your buses here. You can see the levels there, your control room and your loudness levels over here. Just kind of like a, an easy way to see what's going on with all of your audio. And then over here, it's kind of cool. We've got a, a little viewer, which is handy. And uh, it pops out, which is kind of cool if you hit the little icon in the bottom there. And uh, we don't get a lot of options to like work with or, or move like, you know, windows around in Resolve. So the fact that we can pop this one out and move it around and resize it if you want, I mean, kind of handy, kind of neat. So, uh, and to pop it back in, you can just hit the little, little icon in the top right corner there. Moving down, we got our, our time code here. And a uh, fun little tip, if you right click on it, you can change like the format of the time code if you need to see it in a different way for some reason. So I just leave it at the default, but the option's there to change it if you need to. You can change timelines. So if you click on this little drop down here, you can flip between your different timelines right here in Fairlight. You don't have to jump back to edit, then jump back to Fairlight. You can just change, uh, change your timelines right here. Then you've got your transport controls, your forward, reverse, your play, stop, record, uh, the loop button, which is gonna allow you to loop the playback. Um, it doesn't take a clip and like loop it 
through your timeline where you want something to play over and over again, it's just going to loop playback, which I'll show you how uh, that works in a minute. Then we've got um, automation controls, which we're not going to talk about today, but those can come in handy. And then you can just mute it right here, like somebody pointed out. I forgot to unmute it uh, back in the, in the edit tab. But you can mute it. You can drop your volume down. And if you hit the dim button, I think it drops it to like, I don't know, 60% volume or something. So you can hit that and just drop it back real quick um, if you need to do that. Then moving down to our tracks. So here we're going to start to see some of the same info that we saw in our index. Um, we've got our track name, and you can edit it here too by just by clicking in the, the track name there, and it's going to highlight. You can name it whatever you want. Again, it's going to tell us, are we on a mono track? Are we on a stereo track? And our same buttons down here, we've got our lock, our arm to record, our solo button, our mute button. Um, so it's nice just to have options to be able to you know, use these tools these three buttons, for example, in a couple different places. You can also use them in, uh, in the mixer. And then over here, we've got uh, a little 0.0. .0. If you click and hold, you can drag back and forth, and that's one way that you can adjust your levels here in Fairlight. And this actually corresponds to our faders, which are over here. So if I grab this fader and I move it up and down, you can see that number over there is going to change. So they're essentially changing the same thing. You're adjusting your fader. So you can adjust your levels that way uh, when you start working with your audio. Although for me, that's not the way I prefer to do it initially. Um, I'll show you how I typically like to start uh, adjusting my levels and stuff. Um, and then I save adjusting the faders kind of at the end to help kind of blend everything together uh, a little bit more. Um, so then Moving over, obviously you got your timeline here. On our clip, uh, what we see right here, we can see our waveforms. We have what they call the gain line right here. So this is another way that we can adjust the levels for our clip by raising and lowering this. And uh, levels, if that sounds confusing, think of it as like adjusting the volume, right? We're making it louder or quieter. Um, and we would watch our meters to see where we want our levels or, our, or the loudness of our audio to fall. So we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into uh, our example. Up here, you got your timeline view options, and uh, I think Casey had touched on this maybe first thing this morning, where you can show your video track, which actually I turned it off in the edit index, but if I had it turned on there, uh, you would see it pop up. You can look at your waveforms in different ways. You can turn that gain line on and off. I like to leave it on because that's one of the main ways that I like to start adjusting my levels a little bit. Navigation options, it's just different points on uh, where, you know, your playhead's going to jump to or snap to, um, you know, where fades are, the beginnings, jump to markers or jump to transients, uh, which are cha different changes in the music that we can tell Resolve to pick out for us. You can change the way the timeline scrolls. It's kind of just how, how do you like to see it? You know, do you want it to the playhead to stay still? Do you want it to uh, scroll back and forth? Just different ways to look at it. Then down here, you've got the scroller, which is kind of cool, too. If we click on that, it's going to bring up different options of things to see at the bottom of the screen here. So you can show your video track, and we can add up to two different audio tracks. So you would turn those on, and then you've got the ability to just come here and then select whatever audio track you want. Maybe you want to see, I don't know, your music track against some other track, but like they're too far apart you know, in your timeline. So you can use this as a way to, to just get them kind of next to each other to see you know, what's going on and, and do your audio work. So those are kind of handy. Although, honestly, I, I mean, I don't use them too much, but it's nice to have them. And then there's some preset zoom options there that'll uh, set different things for you that you can check out. Then we've got some more tools here. you got your little arrow tool. Use that all the time to select things, deselect. You've got your range selection tool here. So if you click on this guy, it's cool because you can just come in here, grab a little range, and uh, actually, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, I think. Um, and it'll set in points and out points for you. And that's handy because you can do that. And then if we come up here and we select our loop button, and then we use the keyboard shortcut option or alt and forward slash, it'll just loop the playback of whatever's uh, in, the in, in between the in and out points. So if I hit it here, it'll just play. And then it'll just keep looping over and over again, which comes in handy. straight in your camera with... And the reason we want it to loop is because a lot of times if we're working with something like EQ, I kind of want to hear the same part, you know, over and over while I'm playing with the EQ. So that way I don't have to like start the video, let it play, it'll stop, move the playhead back, you know, and, and just kind of keep doing that. It's more work than you need to do. Then uh, these two guys, I don't use them that much. Then you get your snapping tool, your link tool. You can set markers and, and flags uh, if you want. You've got your transients right here. So transients are cool. If you turn that on, uh, you notice nothing happens, right? We don't see anything on our audio clip. Um, but if I come over here in my audio track, we've got this little 
icon right there. You gotta turn that on, and then it's gonna put the transients in. And transients, you can kind of think of like where changes happen, where the beat is. Um, it's gonna mark out a whole lot of different things. And there's different ways you can isolate maybe parts you wanna hear if you use a little EQ on a clip and then run the transients. You know, maybe you wanna find a kick drum or something like that. Um, there's ways that you can do that. But it just kind of gives you reference points uh, that are you know, based on the waveforms versus maybe trying to use your ear uh, just to kind of hear where different things might be happening in, in your audio or in your music track or whatever it might be. So I'm just gonna turn those guys off. And then we have obviously our controls here to you know, zoom vertically and zoom horizontally. Um, there's some keyboard shortcuts I'll talk about in a minute that we can use instead of using these guys, but that's one way that you can kind of navigate around. Um, I did forget up here, the metadata panel, if you wanna know some info about your clips, uh, you can hit the metadata, look on that, and uh, get that info if you need it. And then you got the inspector as well. Um, so if you have a clip selected, it's basically the same inspector and the audio tab here that you would see uh, in the edit tab. You're gonna have the same options here. Uh, you got your little EQ, the pitch, the pan, volume. Um, and one thing to, to know is that the volume here, when I move this up and down, corresponds to the gain line that's over here on my clip. So kind of like we got you know, the fader down here corresponds to this number over here. The gain line here corresponds to our volume in the inspector. And you can kind of edit them in either spot, you know, whatever, whatever you like to do. So closing down the inspector. Um, so just taking a look at the mixer here, this is where we've got uh, a lot of stuff uh, going on and where you're gonna get a lot of the tools that you wanna use to work with your audio. So just running through a column here. So a column is everything that's applied to one particular channel. So in our timeline, we see everything horizontally. In the mixer, we see everything vertically. So just taking a look at like our first uh, vocal one channel here, we can see the names down here. You can double click here. You can rename it here if you want, which is handy, right? Lots of places to do things. Same record, solo, and mute buttons over here that we can use and just run it right from the top. We're just gonna go from the top down. So input, input um, is gonna show up as something different than no input. If you have a microphone attached, maybe you wanna do some voiceover work or something, um, you, would, you could come here. This is one way that you can patch in your microphone. You can go to input, it'll bring up this window. And if you had anything that you could patch in, you could patch from your microphone to whatever track that you want. And you could do that there, um, you could also go Fairlight and go patch input output and, uh, and patch things there. But if you had a microphone attached, you would see it here. It would say, you know, whatever your input is. You can also um, adjust buses or patch buses. And then you've got path settings. So if you're working with, uh, you know, a voiceover, you're trying to record into Resolve, and let's say maybe you have no adjustments on your microphone to, you know, boost the volume up. The levels are a little low. It's a little quiet coming in. Um, your computer settings are turned all the way up. You still can't hear it too good. You can come into the path settings here, and when you've got a microphone patched in, you can adjust your record levels. So you can come in here and just boost your gain a little bit for your microphone that's coming in. So you've got a good enough single signal uh, coming in to work with. And you've also got you know, the trim and, and direct output, which will help you know, boost and change your, your signals a little bit too. But if you're having trouble and you're doing a voiceover and it's just too quiet, you can't adjust anything on your microphone, your computer settings or you can't adjust anything or whatever, this would be a good place to come in and say, hey, I wanna boost up my, my gain a little bit so I've got more signal coming into uh, Resolve for my voiceover. But if you already have audio in here, you don't even have to worry about input, but it's good to know what it does. Next, you've got order. So order is what order is my audio gonna be processed, right? So we've got my, my clip, right? So what's gonna happen to my clip next, right? Well, first, typically we're gonna set our levels. So we've got good levels for our audio clip, right? But then what's it gonna go to next? And if we look at order here, it says effects, dynamics, and then EQ. So by default, our clip that we have is gonna go into any effects that we apply. Then it's gonna to go to into any dynamics that we apply. Then EQ will be applied to it very uh, last at the end. So it's what signal path is your audio taking essentially. And I like to change this um, down to EQ, then dynamics, and then effects. And it's gonna change the way um, your audio sounds. So say you had the same settings in all three of those categories. If you change the order of them, it's gonna change the way that it sounds. But I like to do EQ dynamics and effects because I like to take my clip, 
Then I bring it to the EQ and I pull out things that don't sound good, right? That sound harsh, that, um, that, that I just don't like, right? I'm gonna use the EQ to do that, to clean it up, pull out things that sound bad. Then I'm gonna go to dynamics and I'm gonna work with the dynamic range of my audio a little bit, right? We're gonna deal with the, the loud parts and the quiet parts. And then once I've got my audio sounding good, then I'm gonna bring that to the effects and apply any effects that I might wanna put on there. Because I know my audio is good, it's clean, um, volume's good, every, every dynamics are good, and then I'm gonna apply effects. So that's, that's just kind of the way that, uh, that I like to do it. I don't, I don't know that there's a right or wrong way. Um, I think it depends on what you're trying to do, the sound you want, um, but I like to go EQ, dynamics, and effects. And then the next section here we have is effects. So with your effects, this is where you're gonna be able to add in any kind of effects onto a particular track. So when you add an effect here, it's going on the entire track. So everything that's in the track, all your audio, is gonna have that effect applied to it. So in this case, we drop the chorus effect on there. So everything in this track would have the chorus effect on it. If we didn't want that, we could either move clips to a different track or we could, um, uh, just apply the chorus to particular clips, not to the entire track. And then with effects, you can add them in by just clicking on the plus, and then you would go to whichever one you want, distortion, and then boom, you can add it in. And then once the effect is in there, you can, uh, you've got a couple options. The little red button when you hover over it, turns it on and off. The little drop down all the way on the right is gonna allow you to delete it, disable it, which is the same thing as turning it off, right? <laughs> and, or you could swap it out, right? Maybe you wanna swap out this effect for a different effect. I wanna change it to the dialog processor, changes it to that. And then if you wanna know, say, you know, you put it on your track and you're working, and then you're like, I think I wanna make some changes to the effect. How do I get that effect window back open? Well, when you come over to the effects there, the little slider looking things in the middle here, you click on that, and that's going to bring the whole effect window back up for you so you can get in there and tweak things and uh, changes. So I'm just going to jump in here and delete this guy. We're going to delete this guy because we don't want that. Now. So that is the effects. Now next we got effects in and that means the effects insert. So if I have say five effects on this channel, this insert will light up, which means my effects are being inserted into the channel and they're being applied to my audio. So let's say maybe I'm working on my audio and I wanna know what it sounds like without the effects. Well, you can go through and you can turn them off one by one, or you can just come and click this button once and it shuts them all off. They're not getting inserted into the channel anymore. So it's a handy tool to have to just be able to shut them all off at once instead of having to go through one at a time and, and click them off. Dynamics here is, uh, is the next one. And uh, new in version 18 here is that you can just click it once and it turns it off. Click it twice, it turns it back on, which is kind of handy because you used to have to open it up, come up here, turn it on, turn it off, right? So this is our dynamics um, panel. You've got your compressor in here. You can use gates and expanders. You've got a limiter. Uh, we're gonna talk more about that when we run through the example that we're gonna take a look at. Um, but this is where you can work with dynamics. You've got your EQ next, and same with the EQ, you can just single click on it, it's gonna turn it off for you. Single click, it'll turn it back on. Double click, it'll open it back up. And this is uh, the, the whole EQ here, we're gonna cover this a little bit more in our example, and uh, hopefully we can help clean up the audio a little bit uh, that we have. Um, but that's, that's the mixer, or the uh, EQ. Next you've got bus send, so you can send channels of audio to other buses. Um, it depends on how you want to route things. I mean, the more complicated you get with audio, the more you might have a reason to kind of group things in different ways. Um, I know some people are confused by buses, but really just think of a bus as like a group of channels, right? That we can do things with it, right? Um, we'll talk more about that in a second. You can pan your audio left, right, front, back, depending on how you have your channel set up. Um, your bus outputs, are you going you know, to your, your main outputs. And if I, you could click and drag your mixer bigger there like I did with the little, little arrows there. Um, we can, uh, for example, if we wanted to send, say, our vocal channels to a vocal bus, right? I can come here and right now they're going to bus one. So by default, bus one is like your main audio coming out of DaVinci Resolve. So everything's gonna go to bus one. Well, let's say I wanted to, uh, you know, I had some effects I wanted to apply to my vocal channels. I didn't wanna go to every single vocal channel, put the same effect on there. I wanted to just do it once. Well, we can have all of our vocal channels go to one bus and then just do everything once on the bus. So to do that, 
You could, uh, I could just X these guys out, get rid of them. Click on the plus here and I could go vocal bus, vocal bus. So now when I play my audio, it's gonna come to this vocal bus right here. And we can see the meter moving, but we don't hear anything coming out of Resolve, right? So why not? Well, it's because our bus, our vocal bus, bus vocal, isn't going anywhere, right? Right now it's just sitting there, it's not doing anything. So we have to tell Resolve, hey, send that vocal bus, my group of my vocal channels, send that guy to the main output because I want to get it out of Resolve. I want to hear my audio. So you can click on the plus here and send that to bus one. And now when we play through, we should be able to hear it. Thanks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's... So now we've got our audio coming out of Resolve. So buses are nothing more than just a way to group stuff. Now there's another way that you can group channels right here in the mixer and that's using group. So if I, for example, put my two vocal channels in group number one, and I make my mixer a little bit bigger here, we have group number one right here. So now these are like what they call a VCA, right? And it's kind of like a remote control for my two vocal channels. So you may be thinking, well, how's that any different than a bus? They're both groups of channels, I don't get it. Well, if we look in the, the column above the bus, for example, we've got a lot of options and things we can change and things we can do with our bus, right? We can add effects, we can add dynamics, EQ, we can send it somewhere else if we wanted to. We've got things we can do with it. Well, if we use a group from this group down here on the bottom and group one, there's nothing up there, right? We can't do anything with that. But what the group number one is gonna do here is if, for example, you know, I set, say my faders were set like this, you know, and that's, that was good, good levels for these two particular tracks. Well, let's say I wanted to make them as a whole louder or quieter. Well, I could come in and move each one individually, but then what if I mess up the relationship between them a little bit, right? I could change you know, the, the, the balance or, or the mix that I had. Well, with a group like we have all the way here on the right, I can click on this, and if I drag this fader, it's gonna proportionately raise or lower those two faders. So it looks like one's moving more than the other, but it's because at the bottom of the scale, you know, it gets close, it gets tighter as we go down, down our, our level scale here. So just a, a different way of, of, of grouping things, it depends what you wanted to do. Um, you know, if you had a lot of effects or you're using third party effects, you know, on uh, tracks, like uh, there's some, you know, noise, background noise reduction effects that I have. If I have it on like three or four different audio tracks on my computer, sometimes it gets a little sluggish, right? So I could use a bus, put the noise reduction on there once instead of three times and then just send all my audio tracks to that one bus so I only have one instance of the effect but all the tracks are going through it um, just to kind of like lighten the load on, on your computer a little bit. So different ways you can do things. Um, and then you've got your, your faders down here. Uh, I'm just gonna double click these guys to reset them but you've got um, a way to adjust your levels or your volume again of all of your audio. So, um, so that's kind of like everything in a nutshell and kind of the parts and pieces and, and some cool little things you could do with different parts of it. So now let's get into the example here. So I'm gonna come in, select my clip, and I'm gonna come to my inspector and just, I'm gonna reset this. So we're gonna start working with this. Oh, actually, a couple timeline tips. So before we get into the example, with just getting around and doing things with your clips right here in Fairlight. So, uh, the first one was zoom, right? So we have these tools right here to zoom around, but you can also just use, uh, again, the middle mouse wheel, right? Little mouse, middle mouse wheel. If you hold shift and middle mouse wheel, it's gonna scroll vertically. If you hold control and the middle mouse wheel, it's gonna zoom horizontally. Um, and if you hold alt, Sorry, I'm a, I'm a Mac guy. Some of these keys are a little weird here. <laughs> if you hold Alt, that lets me zoom in more. Control, didn't, control slides back and forth. All right, here we go. Control slides back and forth along the timeline. Alt zooms in and out uh, horizontally. So you can do that and navigate around like that a little bit quicker than coming up here and sliding these guys and trying to get exact every time. Um, so that, that's, that's one way you can help navigate around a little bit easier. Rename the tracks, we talked about that. You can double click and rename your tracks. Try and stay organized with stuff so you know where things are. Um, I know sometimes with sound effects, things get a little, you know, jumbled up. I know I just kind of throw stuff on tracks sometimes, but try and stay organized if you can. Um, you can cut clips right here using the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, was it Command, Command or Control B? Sorry, Control B on a PC. Um, you can make cuts here in your audio if you want to do that. Um, you don't have to jump back to edit to do that. We can move tracks around easily. Say I want to move this to my vocal two track. Just use your little arrow key, 
or arrow pointer. You could drag and drop it down. But let's say maybe you're in the middle of the timeline somewhere and you, make, you don't want to move it left and right, you just want to bring it straight down. You can highlight it and you can use the um, Alt key and your arrow keys and it'll drop it straight down, right? And move your audio up and down. So that's handy. I use that a lot when I'm just trying to organize stuff on tracks. Um, we can copy the clip really easily. Say you've got a sound effect, maybe a, a transition whoosh or something that you want to copy around. You can use Alt and then just click on a click and clip and drag it. And you can copy clips all over the place if you want. So that's handy to know. We can fade clips in and out, just like in the edit tab with the little uh, ha handles right here. Drag it in, fade it, and then you can also, you know, change the way in which it fades in if you want. Um, adjusting levels, we kind of talked about that a little bit. You've got, you know, the, the gain line here. You've got your inspector over here with the volume, you can use the faders if you want, or this number over here. Um, it just kind of depends on you know what what you want to do, what what you prefer. Um, another cool thing that uh, I think Casey touched on this morning is that if you zoom way in here in Fairlight, you can get all the way down to like the sample level of audio. I'm gonna zoom in here. And you can keep zooming in, zooming in, and zooming in until you see the waveform, and then you see the points. So if you had like a click or a pop or some kind of noise that, that you weren't sure how else to get rid of, you could come in, find that spot, grab the couple points, and then just drag them down to kind of reduce that loud click or pop or whatever it might be. Um, you're probably not going to want to do it for a ton of problem areas, but it can work if you have, you know, just one or two spots or something like that. So zooming way in, you can, you can get those options. And then uh, looping the audio we already talked about. So, all right, so let's get into our example here. Reset the, the volume of this guy again, which it is. Good. All right, so I'm going to play through this clip, and then uh, we're going to listen to it. I'm going to pop out my viewer here so we can actually see it. And we're going to listen to it and make some observations so we can decide what do we need to do with this audio? How do we want to start working with this audio? So let's go ahead and play through here. So now maybe you have a more budget-oriented microphone. You know, we can't all afford these. So first thing we notice is really quiet, right? Audio sound awesome, right? What if you're using a budget microphone or maybe up there. you're just recording straight into your camera with the built-in microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Oh. Now this microphone Lost is not good. There. It stinks. Go? I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to. All right, so good enough because we can't hear it anyway. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, is start working with our levels, right? We need to bring it up to a volume that we can hear it, right? Because right now it's not doing nothing, right? So I'm going to close our viewer. So to start, what I want to do is I'm going to play through my clip a little bit, and I'm going to look at my meter down here and just kind of see where, where are my levels at. Let's get a baseline here and see where we're at. So if I play through, let me watch over here. So it's hovering around maybe minus 25 dB right there. So where we want to be with our dialogue audio and where I try to get it is around that minus 10, minus 8 dB, somewhere in that range, give or take a little bit. Um, that's where I want my meter going up to. So... To do that, I'm going to adjust the levels or the volume by just coming here to my gain line. I'm going to boost it up. So I'm going to come up to, you know, I got to be around like say, let's try minus 15 and a half. So now if I play through, let's see where we fall on our meter. Phone, I couldn't afford a different one. We're going to take this audio, bring it into Fairlight, and we're going to see what. So we that's can do kind of more in the range where I want it to be. For our audience and for the people. Right, it's watching. coming up in the red a little bit. We don't have to get too worried about the red just yet. The red doesn't mean we're peaking. It means. Be careful because you're getting close to peaking, right? And we're going to deal with that a little bit more uh, with dynamics. Um, but it looks like it's kind of in the range uh, so that I want it to be. I think it'll be good enough for a good place to, to start. So leave it there. because And we're at 15.5. Let's just go let's see if we can go to 16. One other tip. Um, notice when I'm doing this, it's kind of jumping the numbers pretty fast, right? So if you hold the shift key, then it lets you go a whole lot slower, like a little more incremental. Um, kind of by, by the point, whatever. So that's handy. Hold the shift key while you're doing the uh, gain line there, and then you can be a little more precise. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. So now let's play through it a little bit and listen again and see, uh, see if, what else we notice that we might want to try and clean up or fix. Maybe you have a more budget-oriented microphone. You know, we can't all afford these big fancy microphones to make our audio sound awesome, right? Can you guys hear it okay out there? It sounds quiet to me. Can you guys, can we turn that up? Is there a way to turn that up? All right, well, I'll just tell you what, what, what I hear in there. I'll play through it again once he turns it up a little. So it's going to sound a little hollow, right? It's going to sound a little tinny, kind of like I'm in a tin can. Um, 
there's a little bit of background noise, but not too much. Uh, most of it, it's just going to kind of sound like hollow, right? It's not going to sound full. It's not going to sound like there's body or, or like, like um, uh, thickness and, and body to the voice, right? So fancy microphones to make our audio sound awesome, mm -hmm. right? What if you're using a budget microphone or maybe... It actually doesn't sound too bad on these, but... Oh. All right, you just worked the volume over there for me, right? <laughs> All right, so, so what I would do is... Um, a lot of times when, I'm, when you're editing audio, it's good to have on headphones because then you can kind of hear the differences a, a lot better. A lot of times the differences or the changes that we're going to make are going to be pretty subtle. But at the end as a whole, it'll make a good difference when you hear like a before and after. So the first thing that I would do is, is try and remove some of the tin can sound. And uh, it actually didn't sound too bad in here, but let's see what we could do with it. So to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of the EQ. So I'm going to double click my EQ. I'm going to open that up, and uh, I'm just going to kind of give you some, some general tips in here on how to use the EQ. I don't have enough time to go over all the, the knobs and buttons and everything, but when you're working with dialogue, a couple tips that you can do right off the bat before you even start listening to anything is you can apply a high-pass filter, right? So if I come here and I just turn on band one, that applies a high-pass filter. And what a high-pass filter is, it says wherever my point is, so at 70 hertz in this case, everything that's below that, get rid of it. I don't want to hear it. Anything that's above that, let it pass through uh, so I can hear it. And the reason we want to apply a high-pass filter is because with dialogue, a lot of the, the low-end stuff is going to be more like, like bass, right? And it's just going to make the voice kind of sound muddy um, and, and just not as clear as it could be. So we don't need that in speaking dialogue. So you want some low-end, but we don't want the bass stuff, right? We're not a bass guitar or whatever, so we don't, we don't need all that. So typically what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll dial this guy up to 100, 120, kind of depends on your, your, you know, your particular clip. But if you go somewhere in that range, that should be a good place to start. And then you can always just, you know, play your clip and bring it up and you'll, you'll hear it. It'll start to sound like too thin, you know, it'll sound, um, it won't sound good. And then you'll be like, oh, let me bring it back a little. But if you go around 100 or 120, somewhere in there, um, that's usually pretty, a pretty good place to start. And then when it comes to, to dialogue too, uh, I'd like to turn on band six and this is gonna be a low pass filter. So it does just the opposite of what the high pass does. So if I bring it down just a little bit, say like 16 something, it's just gonna get rid of any of those real high pitched uh, frequencies that in dialogue and in speaking, when I'm talking in a video, I don't need it, right? It's just gonna, it has the potential to just, you know, make my audio not sound as good. So I'm gonna just turn that on, get rid of a little bit of the highs, um, and that'll help if you have anything going on up there. Now, if you're working with like, singers and vocals, maybe you want a little bit of that high end to add a little like sparkle and a little presence to the voice, you know, when somebody's singing or something. But for speaking, um, generally I'm gonna just apply a little bit of a low pass filter there. So now everything in between here, in between these two is everything that's going through. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for things that don't sound good. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna start with one of our points here. I'm gonna pick point number four here and you can just click on it and drag it around and we can boost or reduce um, anything, right, wherever we put this point. And if you use your middle mouse wheel, you can actually change the shape of our little bell curve here, uh, which is pretty handy. So what I like to do is make it kind of narrow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play through our clip, we're gonna bring this guy up, and I'm just gonna sweep it back and forth like this until I hear something that doesn't sound good. And you're gonna know it, like it's gonna sound weird in your speakers or it's gonna sound extra muffled or uh, extra sharp. Um, where it's kind of hurting your ears a little bit, especially if you have headphones on. And we're gonna find wherever that is and then we're gonna stop and then that's where we're gonna make a cut, right? Because when you're working with like dialogue and audio a lot of times with the EQ, we wanna cut stuff before we boost it, right? We wanna pull out things that are bad before we try and like push in things to make it sound better, right? And another tip like with the EQ here is, in my experience, pretty much any microphone, whether it's on a camera, whether it's people with a handheld microphone, there's always gonna be some kind of issues, in my experience, in this 800 to like 3K range. In there, you're gonna find things that kind of sound harsh, right, in my experience. Um, so that's where I'm gonna start to look with this point number four. I'm just gonna sweep back here. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna select a little range where we can listen to, make sure my loop button is on, and now I'm gonna use that uh, alt forward slash, and we're just gonna sweep back and forth with this point number four and see if we hear anything that doesn't sound good. Microphone on your camera like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but so let's here, say I had to, microphone like on your camera. Killing the speaker there. So we know that sounds bad and it sounds extra worse because we're boosting that up, right? So we know that's a point we wanna get rid of. So 
You can just click on your point and drag it down, but so that we can go straight down, I like to come down here and use the gain knob and just bring it straight down. So I'm gonna play it and then I'll just drag it down. Microphone on your camera like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone. So there, so we cut out that frequency and it's not gonna be sounding as harsh um, as it would if we left it in there. So we're gonna do the same thing with our other points too. Now you don't always need to use all these points. It depends on your microphone, depends on your recording. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, some microphones are need more than others. Um, I know with the microphone that's just built in here and all the time I was playing with it, I used most of these guys um, because it just didn't sound good and it helped remove some of that tin can kind of sound. So I'm just gonna loop it and I'm gonna do the same thing with, uh, with point number three here, a little bit below where I did point number four. So I'll just narrow this guy out. Microphone on your Loop camera, it. like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to. So maybe like right there. And I'll just drop that down. And you, you, you might be thinking, well, how much do I drop it down? You just got to kind of listen to it and see what, what sounds okay, right? Maybe you want to go down 5 dB, and maybe that's not enough. Maybe you want to go down, like I did here, 10. Um, you don't want to go too far because then it's going to distort it too much or pull out too much. Um, so it's kind of a balance. You got to listen to it and it just takes time of like developing your ear and, you know, going through audio and listening to it, EQing it and just seeing what sounds good. Um, sounds good to you because ultimately we can look at the meters and all this kind of stuff, but we want it to sound good too. So you got to just use your ears and, and make sure it sounds, sounds good to you. So now I'm going to, I'm going to take my band five and two here. So here's my number two. Here's my number five. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing with those, but we notice if we try to boost those up, they look different, right? So I'm gonna make it the same bell curve. So if I come to my band five here, you just click this little drop down and click on my little bell curve here. So now I've got the same thing. So I'm gonna make them a little narrow. I'm gonna bring that guy up and I'll just change the uh, band number two here so we can do the same thing. So I'm just gonna play through and adjust these two and uh, the reason I'm, I keep working with these is because I want to move, remove more of the tin can sound. And maybe it doesn't sound too tin canny on, on these speakers, but if you throw on some headphones, it totally sounds like a tin can. So let's just play through and uh, we'll find two more spots that don't sound like these guys. Camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but... Right, so maybe I want to do something like that, right? Looks a little weird, but I mean, it was also a crappy microphone, right? And and. Maybe that's gonna start to help it um, sound better. So let's just hear a little before and after. I don't see if we can hear a difference on, on these speakers here. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D. So it kind of, it, it pulled out some of the highs. It's kind of sounding, it actually sounds a little bit more full on, on these speakers, um, but it's just gonna help pull out some of those frequencies that we don't like. All right, so we're gonna skip past the rest of this, this is, is good. And if you don't even know where to start with EQ, there are some presets that they, they put in 18 here uh, that you can just click on one and try it. Um, it. Might work, it might not. Maybe it'll just put some points on there and you can at least grab them and start moving moving them around in, in the frequency ranges that they put them in. Um, because you're gonna, if you don't know where to go with frequencies, like it's, it's, it's a little confusing. Um, but if you just visually do it like we just did here, move it around and listen, um, that's a great place to start too. So I'm gonna close that, I think we're sounding all right there. So next up we go with some dynamics. So I'm gonna open this guy up. And in dynamics here, if you don't even know where to start with this, you also have some presets that they put in there in version 18, which is pretty sweet. So you can just click one of these guys uh, as a starting point. Um, but what we wanna do in here is turn on our compressor. So our compressor is gonna take the parts that are really loud and attenuate them, bring them down a little bit. And then we're gonna use the makeup slider, which is right here. We're gonna use that to take our quiet parts in our audio and bring it up. And the goal here is to take the loud parts and the quiet parts and bring them a little bit closer together. So that way when somebody's watching our video, they're not sitting there and they gotta like the quiet parts come and I gotta jack the volume up. And then it's the loud parts and now I gotta turn the volume back down, right? We want consistent audio so that it's a, a good listening experience. And we want some dynamic range in there, but we don't want it to be so extreme that like you're riding the volume, you know, on your, your TV, your computer, your phone, whatever. So compression is gonna bring down those loud parts for us and makeup is gonna boost up the quieter parts. So 
I, turn, I just turned on my compressor. We'll just go with the default settings here. This blue line tells me where the compressor is going to kick in. So I can grab my threshold and I can change that a little bit. I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. And I'm going to play through my loop section here. And I'm just going to listen to it, and I'm going to watch this meter right here. This is my output meter. So this tells me where are my levels at, right? Because we did a little EQ work. We brought down some things. Uh, we're applying a, a, a compressor. So as you start to do these different things, you're going to lose a little bit of signal from your audio. So we need to compensate for that and boost things back up. And by using the makeup here to boost things back up, it'll make our quiet parts a little bit louder and uh, hopefully help balance things out. So. I'm just going to play through our loop here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Take it, take. And uh, let's see if our dynamics are working. And if they're working, our compressor is going to show up in this middle, um, middle meter here. And let's see if it's working. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon. So we can see it's working a little bit. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I we can also see our levels are down now around. I had to. I forgot my microphone. Minus 15, I a little a over. Right? On your so like I'm, gonna, I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not I'm good. Boost this it up. stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say now I Now we see the compressor to. working a little more, so the compressor is going to keep it from getting too loud, right? And we're bringing our levels kind of back up to that, that minus 10 uh, dB range there. Um, so, and you can adjust these things. I'm not going to go too into detail on it because it's like a whole video thing on its own, but you can make adjustments here and, and um, just kind of sculpt the sound the way that you want. The other thing that I like to do is, is uh, turn on the, the gate or expander, and what that's going to do is say, hey, anything below a certain threshold, in this case, uh, minus 35 dB, right, on our meters, it's going to reduce the volume of that sound. So, for example, when I'm talking in a video, there's pauses or spaces between my words, right? And maybe there's a little bit of background noise, maybe your computer fan's going. Well, a gate or an expander can help kind of reduce or remove that little bit of background noise that might be between your words and phrases. So you can, uh, you can adjust that right now. You see it comes down to like, you know, zero dB, but if I wanted it to cut down quicker, you know, I can drop it down quicker. And now this graph shows me that it's actually working, right? <laughs> So I don't think you're going to notice it too much in this particular clip, but a lot of times I'll throw that on, at least an expander. A gate is the same thing, but it just allows you to drop that down even faster, right? To kind of like mute the audio below a certain decibel level. So a handy tool um, that, that I use quite a bit. So we'll just leave that like that. And uh, Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my camera. Checking our levels. So. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I could right, so on your camera like I'm doing right here. It's around there. It's not too bad. It's good enough because we're running out of time. So that's where I'm going to leave the, uh, the compressor for or the, the dynamics for this one. So now that we worked with the dynamics and stuff, um, our, our clip is getting there. I think it's starting to sound a little bit better. Um, but if you had some headphones on, it's probably still going to sound a little thin, right? It's going to sound like it's missing some low end. It's missing some... Um, uh, the lower frequencies to kind of just help it sound fuller, a more fuller sound that you might get if you know you used a better microphone or the microphone was closer to me. Um, so how, how can we kind of bring back some of that that warmth to the voice, right, and and the the thickness to it? So you would think you might be able to do it in EQ, and sometimes you can. You can boost you know your lower end uh, frequencies, and that can help and that can work. But in this case, we're going to use some effects. So. We did our EQ, we did our dynamics, and now we're going to go into our effects. And we're following along, you know, the order that I set up here, EQ, dynamics, and effects. So effect, an effect that I like to use to kind of help uh, continue to sculpt the sound a little bit is a multiband compressor. So if you click on the effects, you come down to dynamics, we've got the multiband compressor. So it looks complicated. There's lots of knobs, buttons, and dials here. But you don't have to get too worried about it. Um, they don't give us any presets in here. But what you can do is just start with the default here and see how that works out. So what a multiband compressor does is it takes these couple different frequency ranges that we can change and adjust. And it will compress just those ranges of audio. So for example, um, you know, below where I set my, my high pass filter, we're not going to get anything down there anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. In our mid-range here, that's going to be where we kind of want to boost for this particular clip because I know it's, it's pretty hollow sounding, right? It, it, it needs more, uh, more body to it. So where we're going to find that kind of sound in a dialogue or in a speaking track is in this, uh, you know, 200, 250, in this range over here somewhere. So I know I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. 
Um, and that's probably what we're gonna, we're gonna boost a little bit. Then the next section is kind of where the main part of your, your vocal or somebody speaking lives, right? From, you know, like 800 to 3K, we said a little more, a little less. It's gonna, a lot of it's gonna kind of live in that, that range uh, of our frequencies. So we wanna be able to, you know, adjust those. So we got the low ends and then we've got the main part of the voice. And then you've got the high ends, right? With a speaking track like this, we don't have a whole lot of high ends. So don't have to worry about it too much. If there was a lot of um, maybe like hissing or, or that kind of noise in there, we can reduce this range or compress it a little bit more to kind of get rid of it a little bit. Um, but for now, I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna drag it down to, I don't know, 3,500, somewhere like there. So I'm gonna play through it and we're just gonna hear what it sounds like. Maybe I'll turn it off, turn it on, and then I'm gonna make some adjustments and uh, we're just gonna see, see how it sounds. Now the adjustment that I'm gonna make, all I'm gonna do, besides maybe moving these guys left and right a little bit, is the gain button right here. So I'm either gonna bring it up or I'm gonna bring it down. That's all I'm gonna do. So let's loop our playback. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone is not good. It stinks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to, oh. I forgot my microphone, I couldn't afford a different microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Really now this microphone is not good. It stinks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's say I had to, I forgot kind of my microphone, these, I couldn't uh, afford a different speakers, microphone but, on your camera, like I'm doing right but, here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. It all the way up. Now this microphone is not good. It sounds it muddy stinks. now, I so wouldn't use it if that I didn't have much, to. But let's right? say I had to. I forgot my microphone. I if I dropped it down, the microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here can on the sound, right? 5D Mark IV. Now this so, microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to. But let's say I had to. I forgot my so microphone. So maybe, maybe I would go there. Right. It's kind of hard to tell with, with these speakers. But if you got headphones on or you're sitting, you know, in front of your better speakers or something, you, you'll be able to hear the differences um, that it makes when you make adjustments to to these different frequency ranges, right? So, and then even if we mess with, uh, you know, where the main part of the vocal lives a little bit, here's what that sounds on your like. Camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Right, then now, now we only hear the low end. It stinks, I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, but let's up. say I had to, then I forgot piggy, my microphone, I couldn't afford good. a different microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. So a lot of that is just listening to it, making an adjustment, does it sound better? Does it sound worse? Do I think I need a little more low end? Do I need to hear the voice a little bit clearer? Um, what, what does your clip need? A lot of it's listening to it and making adjustments and seeing how your clip is affected by that adjustment. And then in here too, we have our, our, our gain knob. So again, as we kind of work with our audio in you know, the multiband compressor here, we're gonna lose a little bit of our audio signal. So a lot of the effects have a gain knob in there where we can boost things back up as the audio is coming out of the effect. So a lot of times I'm gonna use that, and in this case, I, I used it. Let's just microphone see. on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Right, because we now want this to be microphone up around is that not minus good. 10. It stinks, I wouldn't use So, yeah, it's peaking up a little bit more, but you get the idea. That's kind of how you would kind of work with the multiband compressor, right? You, you might want to adjust these ranges a little bit, but something like the numbers you see here might work pretty good to kind of start tweaking it a little bit. And this would really help you be able to just make it sound fuller without having to use the EQ because we use all our points to remove the tin can sound. Um, but this can bring some of that, that, that body and a little bit more warmth back into the vocal. So the, um, another effect that, <clears throat> that I would use a lot of times on just a dialogue or a speaking track is a de -esser. So come to effects, we go to restoration and you got de -esser. So you got this guy here and you can uh, actually use one of the presets that they have here. I usually just come up here Boom, I'll go, the mail, ESS, S. And I'll just leave it there, I'll see how it works. Um, you, you've got a little meter right over here, so you're gonna see if it's working or if it's not. Um, so let's just play through our clip, we'll see if it's doing anything, and we can make adjustments if we need to. We can move the frequency range, we can change the amount, maybe we don't need to do it that much, you don't want it to um, remove too much because then it's gonna sound weird. And these little buttons here, they just change the shape of that of that curve, right? So let's just play through and see if we hear anything. Microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now this microphone so you can is see not it's good. Working. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if, if you I want didn't to hear have just to. But let's say I had to. Sounds, I forgot my microphone. I couldn't here. afford a different microphone on your camera, like I'm doing right here on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Now speakers, this microphone is not good. It stinks. I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to. But let's say I but had to. But you can do that. And if, I forgot if it my looks microphone, like it's catching some S's, you should be able to hear it too when you're editing your audio. That it just pulls out like the harsh S sounds, right? So you don't hear all the time in in the video. So that's so I'm going to usually uh, apply that on there too, just to just to kind of clean it up and make sure nothing sounds too harsh. 
so that, that's the, the gist of how I would kind of go through and the steps I would take to edit some audio. Um, after I get done editing my dialogue, I would then go and look at my um, uh, sound effects. I would maybe adjust the levels on those, make sure that you know if it's happening when I'm talking that things are kind of balanced well. Um, you know, being that I have my, my level set good on my dialogue clip, and let's say I went through my, my music tracks, I went through my sound effects, and I kind of set the, the levels for each one of those things where I wanted them. This is where I would come in at the end and listen to my whole thing, I'd play through it, and this is where, for me, I would use the faders to kind of fine tune things, right? Maybe I want to bring all the effects back a little bit, or all the, uh, the sound effects down a little bit. So I could come to my you know, sound effects too, I'm gonna to drag that down a little bit. Uh, maybe I need to bring my music way down, right? Or whatever. Um, but once I have all my, level, all my levels set for individual clips and things, I know they're good, I can just make fine tune adjustments using the faders, um, and then hopefully we're good to go. And then once I get done doing all that and everything sounds kind of good, I'm going to go back and check my loudness levels. And uh, they talked about a little bit in the, the panel discussion earlier of trying to you know, get in that minus 14 luffs range for YouTube. Um, and you can, you can check your levels uh, or the loudness levels by turning on your um, automation controls. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you've got your, your bus one. And you have to make this track big enough so that you can see it. If it's closed, you won't see it. You got your loudness history right here. And this is going to be where you can tell <clears throat> what the loudness is for your video. So I don't know. I think I, think I have it set at minus 14 uh, in, my, um, uh, in the project setup, uh, project settings. So when we're looking at this graph here, this zero represents minus 14 luffs. A little weird, but that's how they do it. So, um, so we want this blue line when we're playing back. I mean, just mute this. So if we come back here, and just reset my uh, my thing. So if I just play this, let me give it a second. It'll we'll start seeing where our audio is falling, right? So we can see we're about minus six dB below minus fourteen. So let's say just if I push that all the way up, now we can see our levels are going up, right? We're not quite peaking yet, because our, our track wasn't that loud, but you can see now we're getting up close and uh, maybe it's gonna go over, right? Which is gonna tell me I'm too loud for YouTube. When I upload it to YouTube, it, YouTube's gonna automatically squash down our audio, right? It's gonna compress it. And you don't want YouTube to do that. You wanna have control over your audio and being able to get it to the right levels so it sounds good. Um, and it's what you want it to be, not what YouTube is gonna make you turn it into, so. So that's, that's in a nutshell. I know my timer's done. So in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's how I kind of go through the audio process. That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, well done, Jason. Thank you so much. That's a, that was a lot of information. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people who are really going to get a lot of value out of that. Hope so, and yeah. You did great. Awesome. You did great. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. We're getting, going to get into the Q&A section with Jason. I'm sure you guys have some questions. I know we got a ton from the chat, which is really cool. Um, but we'll start off here. Does anyone here have questions? Look at that, just like like weeds popping up. I'm going to start back here. So we haven't we haven't heard from this guy yet. Go ahead and stand up. Uh, thanks for the session. Um, I was just wondering, is there a quick and easy way to turn off all effect changes or um, any changes you're making to the audio track to kind of compare the original? Um, so I mean, you can. If you're looking at uh, okay, I'm up there. So if you're if you're looking at the mixer, you can click that in button, the insert button, and that's going to turn off your effects. And then it's as easy as just clicking once on the EQ and dynamics to turn it off. The other way is just to you know come and hold Alt, drag it down to another track, boom, and then you can just listen to it on another track. You can solo, and you'll only hear that track. And you can solo back and forth to compare. You had a question? Yeah. yeah. First, uh, thanks for a great presentation. Um, in regards to uh, preparing your audio for YouTube, like your target, the loudness is what, around minus 14 it's, loves? Right, minus 14, yeah. yeah. Do you have to change anything in the project manager on the Fairlight where you can change your target loudness? Yeah, so to set your target loudness for a project, you want to come to your project settings, Fairlight, and right down here, you have target loudness level. So I think by default, I think it's minus 23, which is like broadcast stuff. Um, but YouTube's minus 14, so you can just 
plug in whatever number you want. And then when you get to that loudness graph in Fairlight, the zero um, is going to represent uh, minus 14 luffs. Although if you don't want to look at it that way, you can change her. Uh, right here, you have absolute scale. You can turn that on, and I believe now it's going to show, yeah, now it shows minus 14 luffs. So it just depends how, uh, how you want to see it. So again, it's right up here. If you come to your loudness right up here, and the three little dots, you've got absolute scale. So that's going to put that line at minus 14. If it's off, the zero down here represents minus 14. I don't know why that is, but it's the way it works. <laughs> Yeah, just briefly, the uh, I noticed that the loudness and loudness meter up there at the top, uh, next to control room. Yeah, that M stands for medium, uh, median uh, luffs rather than integrated. Uh, how do we see the integrated luffs meter instead? Yeah, luff meter is useless to me. Um, I don't know. I never really use that meter up there, so, <laughs> so yeah. I'm not really sure. How, I'm not really sure how to change it. The only thing I use is the. Uh, the reset and the start, and then I just look down here uh, in the graph. So uh, I'm not sure. It's a good question. Good question. All right, we're going to take a question from our uh, YouTube chat here. Is there any way to export a project and have the sound effects and tone separate as opposed to locked into the MP4 MOV? Like one version complete and one version to be able to change the sound effects without the project file? I mean, you can export like a multi-track file, like a surround sound file or something where it'll have the different tracks and stuff. Um, that's one way you could do it. I don't know if you could just bounce the audio out. I don't know. I don't really bounce audio out too much. It's For me, it's everything's kind of in the video um, and I can just do everything I need there. So I don't, I don't send out just the audio or I don't need multi-track stuff coming out. Um, so I don't, I don't really do that too much. But. Any other questions in-house? Right here. Just a quick question about the room tone. Do you use the room tone for bigger production, and do you like subtract that from the, you know, from the? Yeah, um, I mean that's that's uh, a little out of my wheelhouse. I don't really deal with that at all uh, much. Um, I, I just kind of work on smaller projects. I, I don't do any kind of big production type things. Um, mostly, what I do with the audio here is just brought from the, the sound world and and mixing live stuff, live music and stuff like that. Um, so. Coming from there to here, it's just working on videos, uh, you know, for YouTube mostly or just other <clears throat> smaller client projects if, if those come in. Um, so I don't really have any insight towards that. YouTube, you don't need it, right? No, I mean, I, I don't worry about it. Okay. Nah. All right, another question. First, uh, thank you for the presentation. It's been very informative and should prove very helpful for many. Thanks. But uh, anyway, my question is, um, like if you're working in like on the color section and you've made color corrections to a particular clip and you're able to you know hit that middle scroll wheel to, to copy that grade mm -hmm. through other through subsequent clip clips can you do something similar to that sure. with the audio yeah. so you can copy around things you got a few ways you can do it um, you can come to your track and just click over in, in this area and you can uh, copy your attributes and then I can go to the next whatever track you want right click again and you can say paste attributes, and then you've got the option to do all these different things. You know, you can do um, all of them if you just click the top, but your volume, dynamics, mute, pan, EQ, and plugins. So you can select what you want to copy from track to track. Um, or you can, another way you can do it is if you just come over to whatever part you want. So effects, for example, if I hold the Alt key, you can just click, drag, and boom, it copies it right to another track. So you can copy it around like that if you want. On the dynamics and EQ, just right click, copy, right click, paste. Perfect. And there you go, so it's, it's pretty quick. You can also make presets though too for individual things, any one of these individual things, or globally as like a whole track. So for me, I have the same recording set up all the time. I know what I need, the settings. I have a whole track preset saved. I just apply the whole thing to the track and boom, I'm done, one click. And you can do that preset in different timelines? You can do the preset anywhere, yep. So if you made a, yeah, once it's in there, um, Fairlight, presets library, all your presets will live in here. E EQ, dynamics, plugins, global track, global bus, and then configuration presets. So, yeah. Any other questions for Jason? Hi, thanks for uh, being here and giving this lesson. Um, 
so I see there's there's stereo and mono to be able to edit. Can DaVinci do 5.1 at all? Any surround sound? Or, or how, how do you get to that or do that? Yeah, it can do surround sound. So you could just make a new track, right? Add a track, 5.1 surround, 7.1. Um, I don't do too much of it because I don't, I don't think you could do it on YouTube. Or somebody told me recently that you can get it if you... I don't know if you watch a certain way. I don't know. I tried it before and it doesn't work. Um, but but yeah, you can you can do surround sound and all that kind of stuff. And they've got a whole bunch of cool tools that I haven't really had a chance to get into because I don't even have a five a surround sound system. So it's kind of hard to try it out. I'm I'm just a stereo left and right guy to, <laughs> for for now. But but they do have tools to work with it. Yeah. Awesome. Another question from uh, YouTube here. What's the point of having multiple buses? back to bus one just to hear it as opposed to having groups? So the benefit to buses is just that you can apply uh, different things. So in the groups, like we saw, you can only essentially adjust the volume, right, using that, that group feature. But with a bus, you can apply effects or dynamics or effects uh, um, or EQ, I mean. Um, so it's just a, it's a way to kind of group things together, right? It just depends on what you're trying to do, if you have a lot of tracks, a way to maybe consolidate, or maybe there's a reason you need to route things a certain way, or um, they, there's a lot of different reasons. It, it kinda, I think if, if you needed to use a bus or you need to group things a different way, you'd probably know why you'd wanna do it. Um, but it can, it can just help simplify things so you don't have to do something in multiple spots um, if you're trying to apply the same thing to you know, multiple tracks. Like, say for example, I wanted to, I don't know, change the pitch on like all my sound effects, right? Well, I can just send them all to one bus and do it once on the bus instead of going to my 30 different soundtrack or sound effects tracks and applying it to the track over and over and over again. So. Any other questions here at house? All right. I got one here from uh, YouTube. Does the ideal decibel level for audio depend on the quality of the audio recorded? I've edited a short film before. It sounded fine on my PC, but was way too low on my TV. Right, so <clears throat> one of the things that I do is when I'm done with my audio, I'll export out my video, I watch it like all the other guys mentioned, then I'm gonna upload it to YouTube once it looks good, but then I'm gonna watch it there too because what I hear in my good headphones and through some good speakers might not sound the same as it does when I play it on my phone. You know, it might sound like garbage, right, for some reason. So I like to try and just make sure it sounds good, especially when I'm trying new things um, or new plugins. I put it on YouTube and then I listen to it and see how it sounds. You know, how's it sound on my phone? How's it sound on my iPad? I could throw it on my TV. How does it sound there? I've noticed that in general, uh, YouTube videos sound great on most devices, but when I put it on a TV, even other people's videos that I watch and even other big timers, like it doesn't sound as good as it does if you watch, even on like good speakers or headphones, it sounds better there. It doesn't sound as good on, on my TV for some reason. I don't know why that is, um, but a lot of times you want to check it on different devices because it's going to sound different depending on where you're listening. And you just try to get a good balance. You know, uh, if you notice when I put it on all my other devices, you know, it sounds like too much bass. You know, it's too too much low end, but it sounds okay on my computer. Well, most people are probably watching on their phone. So if it sounds all garbled up on their phone, you probably want to try and fix that and then, you know, export it out again and, and give it a try. So... Good advice, Jason. Guys, let's give it up for him one more time. All right. Thanks, guys. So that was Fairlight 101 here. Hope you guys learned a little bit of something. So now you can go out and start to level up your audio in your videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will help you out as much as I can to hopefully get your audio sounding awesome. And if you guys didn't attend ResolveCon 2022 here, it was awesome. Definitely keep your eye out for it for next year because I think it's going to be bigger and better. And it's just a great time with great creators. You get to hang out with all of us. And we get to hang out with you guys, which is awesome. It's a great time, and we learned a ton. So with that said, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.